director here at Minerva. And today I'm joined by Jess Sire from the class of 2020, as well as Sade Ujula, Ojuola and Abby Lindsay from Global Citizen Year. Welcome, Sade and Lindsay. Hi, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Happy to be here. Um, my name is Abby Lindsay, and I am the Partnerships Associate at Global Citizen Year and also an alum of the program. I spent the year between 2012 and 2013 in Ecuador as a Global Citizen Year Fellow. And I am Sade Ojuola. I'm the Admissions Manager here at Global Citizen Year and didn't get the opportunity to do a gap year myself, but now kind of preach the gospel about doing gap years to students like yourself. Awesome. So first we'll have um, Jess introduce herself, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about Nervous Business Scholars Year, as well as Global Citizens Year's Academy, two really unique programs for this fall for high school graduates. Um, so Jess, want to get us started? Yeah, awesome. It's lovely to be here today. So I'm Jess Sire. I just graduated from the class of 2022 at Minerva, and now I am an Outreach Associate for North America at Minerva. Um, I took a gap year after high school, and that's actually when I found out about Minerva when I was doing my gap year in China. Um, so definitely lots to talk about, and I'm excited that we're talking about gap years. Um, lots has changed this year in the way that people are thinking about their next steps after high school. And there's lots of really incredible options that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and so, yeah, we'll talk briefly about each program, and then we'll open it up to questions. So please feel free to leave any questions in the chat in the comments, um, and we'll get to them at the end of the session. But let's begin with um, Sade or Abby. What inspired Global Citizen Academy? Because um, it's different from your usual gap year program, but what inspired the Academy, Academy specifically? Yeah, so ordinarily we run a global gap year program um, around the world. And due to COVID-19, for obvious reasons, we decided um, in April that that was no longer a safe or viable option, both for our students as well as for um, the host communities where we work. And so we decided to launch um, this Global Citizen Academy out of the leadership training that we've been developing as part of Global Citizen Year um, over the past 10 years. We sort of, we realized that we were sitting on a data mine of amazing information and expertise in the space of um, inspiring young people to become the leaders that they, they can be. And um, we couldn't sit this moment out. So we have revamped our entire program as um, uh, an online virtual offering for students who've graduated from high school uh, before they have entered university. Yeah. Um, and, and then Jess, I'm curious if you can share a little bit about the motivations behind the Minerva program as well. Yeah, so Minerva's Visiting uh, Scholars Year program was developed for incoming freshmen. So students who have been accepted into other leading universities around the world, but are now facing challenges attending in residence for the upcoming academic year. So this is an opportunity for college students to join Minerva remotely from anywhere across the world um, for, the, for this upcoming year. Um, for students who aren't able to travel as they had planned or campuses being closed, um, just any restrictions that students are now facing in terms of attending um, university as they had planned. And if they'll be studying, um, and I'll get more into the details about the program itself, but it's Minerva's first year curriculum, the foundation year curriculum, that will then be eligible for transferable college credits, meaning that students can continue with their um, education as they had planned for this upcoming year, and then next year transfer um, and be second students, uh, second year students at uh, whichever university they choose to go to. Wonderful. Um, I think one question that people are really interested in learning more about is how to actually apply to Global Citizens Years Academy. Uh, Shade, do you want to go into that a bit more? Yeah, sure. So applying to Global Citizen Academy is actually pretty fun, if you ask me. Um, we have an application where you have two steps, one of which is really just telling us more about who you are and what you're passionate about, especially in this moment with COVID-19 and all the racial and social justice movements happening right now. 
we're knowing that students are looking for ways to get involved and we wanna see you bring that passion and that energy to Global Citizen Academy. So in your written essay, you're gonna tell us more about what kind of gets you going um, in terms of passions. And then your second um, question is really just letting you get creative and t offering you an opportunity to tell us about yourself from behind the camera. So you're gonna do a two to three minute video and we've seen all kind of creative um, submissions so far. And once you've done those two things, you're going to apply. And one important thing about Global Citizen Academy is that it is sliding scale tuition, which means that we're really committing to accessibility for this program. And so there are actually four tiers of tuition that you can literally select from. So we kind of guide you in terms of what your family income range might be, what might be appropriate, but ultimately it's up to you and your family to decide. So it's either full cost at 7,500 US dollars, $4,000 at the next tier, $1,500 at the next tier, and then $500 at the lowest tier. Wonderful, thank you for sharing. And Jess, would you want to expand a little bit more on what Minerva's Visiting Scholars Year application is about? Yeah, certainly. So it's quite a simple application. We really also are interested in knowing why you'd be interested in this program. Um, the curriculum is very rigorous, and so um, it's, we want to see that you're um, very focused on, you know, getting this, this these academic uh, this academic mindset for this year, and seeing that that would be a good fit. Uh, but we also have a list of pre-approved universities. So if you have been accepted into a university on that list, which you can find on our website, um, then you would provide us the proof of your acceptance, and that would be a part of um, of the application process. And additionally, we would require English language skills, just because all our courses are um, taught in English and um, require uh, communication in English, but um, you don't necessarily have to be a native speaker. You, there's other ways of showing this, um, but just so that you would understand that for the application process. And the deadline is coming up pretty soon on July 20th. Um, so it's, it shouldn't take too long to get the whole application done. Um, it's just a few steps. And yeah, we just wanna see why you're interested and that you'd be a good fit for the academic rigor that the first year curriculum would offer. Wonderful. Um, we seem to have lost Abby, but I'll add her back in right now. Welcome Sorry back, Abby. <laughs> it's alive for a reason. Um, we have one user submitted question for, so far. Um, is Global Citizens part of the Minerva program? And I think this brings up a really good question of what are the differences between the two programs? How might they attract either the same or different students, um, just so our viewers can understand that these are two separate programs that they would potentially be applying to. Um, either Abby or Jess, uh, or Shade, yeah. anyone. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So Global Citizen Academy was designed in partnership with Minerva Project. So we are more focused on blending virtual learning with actual immersive experiences. And so Global Citizen Academy is designed to be done alongside any number of things you might want to do during your GAP experience this year. So we're gonna provide many different impact partners, which means that you can volunteer with a number of different organizations. So some of our partners, for example, are Be My Eyes, um, when we all vote, um, school on wheels, like a bunch of different social impact partnerships. And you'll also be taking actual academic coursework. One course would be leadership as a practice and the other is global systems and society. And so basically you're having the opportunity to get college credit while also making sense of the experiences you're getting either working, volunteering, whatever you're wanting to do in a cohort model with kids from all over the world, or shall I say students from all over the world. <laughs> Wonderful. And Jess, um, someone else added in a comment that I think will help round out your answer. Um, or not round it out. 
expand on. Um, would it be possible to apply to Minerva without applying to the Global Citizens Program? And so again, these are two separate programs and um, Jess can go into what Minerva's vision is all this year. Yeah, so yeah, we're actually talking about a couple of different programs because there's the Global Citizens Academy, um, as Shade just described it. And then what we're talking about today is the Visiting Scholars Year, and I'll give you a bit more information on that, but it um, is separate from uh, the university itself at Minerva, but uh, we can chat more about that if there's questions. But the Visiting Scholars Year itself is essentially um, students come and take the four cornerstone courses, uh, which is Minerva's first year of curriculum. It's very skills based and rigorous and it's foundational and it's, it's broad as well, um, which gives you a lot of flexibility because it's not tied to a specific major. Um, and as I said before, the, the uh, credit, it is credit bearing and so would be eligible for transfer to a different university. Um, to go into your second year next year. And so this is kind of a chance to get that foundational learning, uh, which focuses on four main areas. So thinking creatively, thinking critically, um, effective communication and effective interactions. And the four courses are really designed to have this interdisciplinary understanding of the world around you without focusing on any specific subject or, um, or academic materials, but really making sense of the world through these different skills. Um, it's also very interactive. Uh, it's an interactive learning environment with small classes in real time. Um, so there's going to be students from all over the world taking these classes in different time zones, but it is in real time. And um, yeah, so if that gives you a little bit of an understanding of what the, the Visiting Scholars Year program is. Definitely. And so we actually have um, two alums on this call. Jess from Minerva and Abby from Global um, Citizens in here. Um, Abby, do you want to talk about a little bit about your experience um, as a, a cat, or as a Global Citizens alumni? Um, I know this program is slightly different than what you experienced, but it's still the same overall mission. And mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, like we said, the Global Citizen Academy is a brand new first of its kind program. So I'm not, there's, there are no alums of that program yet. Um, but I am an alum of the Global Citizen Year program where, where the foundational leadership academy um, part or portion of the academy came from. And for me, I think the main things that I gained from my gap year was a sense of purpose through exploring questions that really were challenging to me, um, in my case, in the context of living in Ecuador. But I think those same questions could be found no matter where you're living through the, the sense of exploration and, and challenging um, discussions and coursework that um, Global Citizen Year provides. Um, I also think for me, a big part of it was gaining a network full of um, students from around the U.S. and around the globe. Um, with whom I can now share uh, my thoughts and my learning as I continue growing um, outside of the context of Global Citizen Year nuclearly. Um, the alumni network is a huge gift to me and I continue to stay in touch with them. Um, and my peers definitely challenge me and keep me honest um, and keep me engaged and learning and curious throughout the world and informed of things that I never would have known are happening. So I think, um, yeah, sort of the combination of finding my own purpose and passion through curiosity and and um, investigating my own uh, interests, I guess, uh, in addition to the alumni network were two of the big takeaways for me. Wonderful, great. And Jess, would you want to expand a little bit about your experience with your foundation year curriculum? Yeah, absolutely. I was I was nodding along as Abby was talking because I, I feel very similarly about my classmates and my peers. Um, Minerva is a very diverse and global student body. And so you've got students in your class from all different countries, all different backgrounds, all different types of experiences, bringing those perspectives into conversations in class. I learned so, so, so much from my peers. It's, it's really fantastic. And especially with those foundational classes in my first year, um, I, I attended the other years of Minerva too. So I kind of like built on that as I discovered what my major would be and my thesis, some areas of interest and projects that I wanted to work on. And I was able to explore all those different types of fields in my first year. 
um, having to do Python and learning how to code a little bit when I'm definitely not a big math person. Um, but then also thinking about like global issues and world hunger and just a, a whole bunch of different um, topics where I was able to have these conversations with my peers um, has some, is something that has stuck with me through all these years and was definitely a very foundational um, learning experience for me. Wonderful. And um, so we have a question about our credits transferable to British universities as well. Jess, you want to first talk about Minerva's um, credit transferability and then we'll go over to Sade who can talk about the academies. Yeah, um, absolutely. So it's definitely on a case by case basis, but Minerva would work with you in order to um, to figure out how that would work, get in touch with counselors. Um, you, I would also suggest getting in touch with the registrar from the from your university that you would intend on going to, but Minerva would help with that process too. Yep, similarly for Global Citizen Academy, always going to be case by case, and we always encourage you to reach out to your admissions office if you have questions, but we will cer certainly support you in um, seeing if it's transferable. Wonderful. Um, we have another question. Um, Marcus is excited to apply this year, but he's wondering um, how Minerva hand might handle situations that could potentially put students at risk abroad. Jess, you want to clarify mm -hmm. about um, the remote uh, experience of this program? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, for the visiting scholars year, uh, Minerva does not sponsor F1 visas or J1 visas. It's not a residential program at all. Um, it's completely remote. And so students will be in their home country or wherever they choose to be spending this time um, for this upcoming year. But it wouldn't, there's no residential component of the visiting scholars year. Um, it's completely remote. Yeah. Um, I think it might be um, helpful to explain also that it's not just a remote experience in terms of the community aspect. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Um, in terms of the classes? Yeah, and the support Minerva does uh, provide, even if remote. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is also um, something I was going to mention in the previous question, thinking of my first year. There's still access to professors, office hours, um, other community events and community programming. Um, and Minerva has fantastic infrastructure to allow that online. Um, so even with some of my professors, I'm thinking of a professor who's become a mentor. Um, she was my, my thesis advisor. We became very close and I had classes with her for two years and never actually met her in person, but went to her office hours almost every single week um, and really had a fantastic relationship with her through that. And yeah, the infrastructure and Minerva's platform allows for that. Um, so even if it is remote, you're not just going on, you're not just logging onto your laptop or your computer, taking class and then logging off for the day. Um, there is definitely community engagement and um, access to professors and other support at Minerva um, that Minerva will provide. And um, looking on Global Citizen Sears Academy website, you also have some really great speakers coming to teach your students, like Premal Shal and Wendy Kopp. Um, could you explain a little bit more about how those speakers might interact with students and what insights they hope to provide or gain? Yeah. yeah, so our speakers come from so many different industries, different movements. Many of them are founders, entrepreneurs. And so really we're just trying to get folks who can speak to many different experiences and many different, um, I guess you could say social movements because it feels like that needs to be the focus for this year. Um, the world is just going through so much collectively. And so we wanted to make sure that the people that we bring in to speak at the academy can not only bring value, but also inspire our students because I think we all kind of need that right now. And so a few that I'm really excited about are DeRay McKesson of Black Lives Matter and Campaign Zero. Um, Pramal Shaw, like you mentioned, of Kiva. Seth Godin, who is a huge name. Um, so many different speakers who I think our students will be really excited about and can learn a lot from. 
I would also encourage anyone who's more who's curious about like what a week in the life of Global Citizen Academy might look like to go visit our website, which is globalcitizenyear.org slash academy and click through the experience page because there you'll be able to see a schedule of like which classes this is, you know, not totally set in stone, of course, but which classes you'll be taking on which days um, and leadership and action speaker series, which um, are the speakers that Sade just referenced. They will be speaking once a week to our students, um, and so they'll be offering, um, you know, their thoughts and then um, a chance for students to interact and, and learn from them more directly. So if you're curious about, like, what actually would this look like in terms of my week, um, the expectation is that it's about 10 to 15 hours per week, um, both in the classroom, the virtual classroom, and then um, outside of the classroom prep. Um, and then outside of that, like Shade mentioned, the idea is that you're spending your time engaging in your community, um, working a job, um, taking community college classes, whatever feels appropriate for you in this moment um, as a way for you to be engaging um, in a way that's in alignment with your, your passions and your interests. So it's sort of, it's intended to be a foundational piece for a semester, but it is not a full-time program. Um, and yeah, there's more information about what that will look like on the website, which we can link, I think, probably in the comments or the description after. Yeah, both websites um, are now in the description. We had a bit of technical difficulties at the bit, but we're on the ball now. Um, Jess, do you want to explain a little bit about the time commitment for Minerva's Visiting Scholars? Yeah, um, so the class sessions, there's two class sessions uh, per subject for per week. So eight class sessions a week, and each class is an hour and a half. And that's your um, your seat time when you're in class with your professors and your peers. Um, there is quite a lot, a pretty extensive amount of pre-readings and assignments and um, research that you would have to be doing outside of class that directly relates to your in-class learning. So it is um, a full academic load for the semester. Um, it, it's it's the first year curriculum at Minerva, so it doesn't have um, some of these other pieces as um, that you know another gap year experience would provide with a Global Citizens Year Academy or the Global Citizens Academy. Um, it is a full course load that requires um, assignments, which are very interesting, um, very interactive, and like really like getting into depth into the depth of the materials that you're learning and covering in class. Yeah, do you want to explain a little bit more about? why we have Minerva students prep so much ahead of time in class? Absolutely, and this is one of my favorite parts um, of my experience at Minerva, that uh, there's no lectures, so you're not going to class for someone to be teaching you about the subject matter. You, you uh, quite literally, like, like, you know, learning it beforehand and coming to class ready to discuss it, engage, question things, um, talk about the materials and go into depth in order to explore them more thoroughly. Um, and you get the core knowledge from the readings that you do beforehand. Wonderful. Um, so one of our questions is, do you have any tips for applicants? Now this applies to both of our programs. Uh, Sade, do you wanna start off? Yeah, sure. Um, so I do wanna clarify that our program is for students who have finished high school but have not yet started university. So that might not apply if you are, say, taking a couple of courses at a community college, but we don't want you have to have started your bachelor's yet. With that said, some tips for applying. I would just say don't, don't overthink it. Um, we get some really kind of cool, uh, filmy, creative submissions. And then I also get some really excellent submissions that are just folks doing what we're doing right now, which is looking at the screen and telling me who they are and what they're passionate about. So I think just do whatever feels appropriate for you and within the limits of whatever you might have at home, don't feel like you have to overdo it or you know, create anything fantastic, but just tell us who you are and what you care about so that we can picture you in Global Citizen Academy. Yes. Yeah, I'd say something similar. Don't um, don't overthink it too much. It's really about us wanting to get to know why you're interested in learning in this way, um, why you're interested in the Minerva curriculum. Um, and as Kayla said, there'll be more information about our website so you can have a look at what those courses are um, and how they're designed. 
and yeah, just giving us a little insight into um, why you would be a right fit for it and that you're, you're very eager and keen to get engaged in these discussions and be an active part of these classes. So just, just demonstrating um, that that's something that you're wanting to do. Yes. Um, we have one comment that says the courses sound great. Thank you. Um, and then we have another question about the fees of each program. Um, Jade did mention um, Academy's fees in the very beginning, but maybe you want to just repeat a little bit so new viewers can understand. Yeah, sure. So Global Citizen Academy in full costs 7,500 US dollars. However, we're offering the program on sliding scale tuition, which kind of just means you pay what you can. And so we have four tiers of tuition that you can choose from. The top being 7,500, which means my family can afford it and we want to pay it forward in that way and pay in full. Um, the next tier would be $4,000. The next tier would be $1,500. And the last tier would be $500. And I'll add that we recently just announced a partnership with Sean Mendez Foundation. So the singer Sean Mendez, you may have heard of him. <laughs> and so he was kind enough to donate $250,000 from his organization to Global Citizen Academy to fund scholarships. So that expands our ability to support students who may have barriers to entry. So do let us know if you have any concerns about affording Global Citizen Academy, because we're committed to making it affordable to any qualified student who wants to participate. Yeah, that's really exciting news. Um, Jess, do you want to talk about Minerva's uh, does it your tuition? Yes, yeah, so for the full year, um, it's a cost of 15950 which includes student fees and all the um, other access to programming that I had discussed before. Um, I do want to mention that you could do just one semester if you prefer. It would have to be the full semester, though, just given the scaffolded nature of our curriculum. Um, but if you wanted to do just one semester, it would be um, half that amount and you would just take it from um, from September to December of this year. Yeah, and I know that, so that fee might sound steep, but um, do you wanna go a little bit more about why Minerva's form technology is different than what traditional video conferencing platforms might provide? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've definitely had to use a lot of them recently. I won't mention any names, but yeah, just being on video calls all the time, and trying to raise my hand and being unable to and trying to pull up a whiteboard and then someone physically brought up a whiteboard and started writing and I was like, what's going on? Because um, in the Minerva platform, it's all fully integrated with whiteboard functions and the chat function and hand raises and it's really created for um, very interactive learning. Um, it's a very incredible technology that they um, have been working on for the last few years, um, which all the classes at Minerva are, are based on. So I took every single class that I took at Minerva on um, Minerva's forum, and it really just engages students through so many through breakout groups and polls. And um, I won't go too much into the the features of it which again, you can see on our website, because um, I think that can do it more justice, but it's definitely not just a video conferencing software where you go online and have your video on mute and your camera off. Um, it's very interactive. The professors can see um, who is engaging and your talk time and being able to call on you and help you participate. Um, and yeah, you can ask questions, you can bookmark moments, it's all recorded. So definitely so many different features um, that really enhance the learning experience, um, which is part of why that fee yeah. is what it is. Yeah, that's great. And what's really exciting is that the reason we're on this call together is because Global Citizens, you're also be using the same form technology um, taught by their uh, staff and faculty, but using the same wonderful active learning technology. Um, we have a question from assignments. Um, can you tell me more about how these courses will benefit me in my degree? Um, do you wanna maybe start with Abby about how your experience with Global Citizens here has helped you at college in your future? Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so I think for me, this comes back to while I was in the Global Citizen Year program, I was able to really identify and distill what my passion and purpose was. Um, and for me, that allowed me to then enter into university with a much greater sense of why I was there and what I hope to get out of it, because I had already done that deep inner work of like, what what is it that matters to me? What gets me fired up? Why do I want to keep showing up in class every day? And so that allowed me to take more full advantage of those classes once I was on my college campus. Um, the work that I was doing in my apprenticeship, or in the case of Global Citizen Academy, where you volunteer or work, um, also really informed my, my course of study. I was working as a speech language pathology assistant at a rural clinic, and that totally shifted the course of my life. And I ended up studying psychology and linguistics and working with folks with developmental disabilities all over the US, um, both as part of my coursework as well as part of my like postgraduate work experience. And so I think I never would have found that that purpose and that sense of drive to do that work without having taken my Global Citizen Year. And I think the Global Citizen Academy structure is such that what you're learning in the classroom is very transferable in terms of setting you on a course and a path for success in college and in your career and beyond. Um, I also noticed a question come in about if you have to be a student of Minerva to apply for Global Citizen Academy. And I just want to be very clear that you do not. Like you can apply to one, either, both, um, but you don't have to be a student of Minerva in order to apply for a Global Citizen Academy. Yeah, that's a really great point. Jess, do you want to uh, span a little bit more about how both Minerva schools and Minerva schools visiting scholars year are slightly different, not slightly, they're very different programs. Yeah, um, so the Visiting Scholars Year, as I said before, is just the first year curriculum as a visiting scholar. Um, if you then decided that you wanted to apply for Minerva, you would be able to, um, and depending if, you know, if you get in or not, you'd be able to transfer into your second year at Minerva, but it is very different from Minerva University, which is the four-year global rotation, um, you know, full degree. Uh, this is just a visiting scholars year and I, I wanted to just add on that why we think why we wanted to offer this program and thought that it would be beneficial um, for incoming freshmen and recent high school grads and uh, yeah very similar to what Abby was saying um, the first year curriculum is all about transferable skills and transferable knowledge um, so how it would benefit your degree was one of the questions asked before um, really getting into just how to ask the right questions how to approach a problem um, how to think creatively about those problems, how to think critically about any information that you read, source quality, um, how to think about your audience and effective communication. How do you, you know, talk with your body language? How do you communicate with nonverbal cues? Um, how do you communicate with other people? And then how do you interact with other people, which focuses a lot on leadership and complex systems and systems thinking and thinking about who you are and the wider system that you fit within or how to analyze other systems um, to see how different actions affect, affect different stakeholders really it's such a broad um, and interdisciplinary curriculum that doesn't focus on a specific major you, so you can take all of those skills and then apply them to whatever major or fields of interest you decide to pursue later on in your college career wonderful um, we have a question about um, who will be teaching the actual courses. Shade, do you want to describe who will be, I guess, the teachers of the students in your course? Yes, yeah, so we actually put a call out all around the world to teachers, educators, anyone who has expertise in the two courses that we're putting on. So one, like I said, is leadership as a practice, and the other is global systems and society. So we got literally hundreds of applications. And so right now, it's somebody's job to parse through those and select the best ones. So we are going to have educators from quite literally all over the world. Um, and it's important to note that although we are only giving these two courses, you're going to be able to select from the time zones and the times that work best for you, because we know that people are going to be logging on from all over the world. Definitely. Um, that's really important. We don't want people taking you know, classes at 3 a.m. No one's 
most productive at yeah. that time. Um, Jess, do you want to talk a little bit um, about Minerva's faculty and where we find them? Are visiting scholars getting a different faculty, a different faculty member than Minerva students? Or yeah, no, it's the it's Minerva faculty. Um, the same professors who would be teaching in Minerva University will be teaching the Visitors Scholars Year courses. Um, and they have had extensive training and interaction with the material before. Um, really incredible, incredible professors um, over my few years at Minerva from all across the world, um, experts in their fields, um, experts in so many different, um, different topics and different yeah, different fields, different backgrounds. Um, they will have PhDs. They're really, really, really incredible um, Minerva faculty. And they will be, it's the exact same as Minerva University that you'll have access to in the Visiting Scholars Year. Awesome. Um, we also have a comment um, that they love the idea of being, class, being in class with people from all over the world, um, not just I guess diversity in hobbies or interests, but also the diversity in different cultures and communities in all the world. Um, Shadi, do you want to explain why this is such a, I guess, important and critical aspect of an educational program to Global Citizens here? I mean, it's, it's in your name, Global Citizens. But. Yeah, totally. So Global Citizen Academy is just our effort to create a similar environment that we create for the Global Citizen Year Fellowship. So right now, not very safe for any of us to be traveling. So how do we make it so that students can still be engaged, but still have that element of a cohort that we just see as so important and transformative? And like you said, it's so important that we not have all one experience but we all learn and grow more when we are exposed to other perspectives. And so we know that courses like leadership as a practice and global systems and society, those kinds of um, topics are only going to be enriched by more people's cultural experience and more people's knowledge. So for us, the more students from all over the world we can get in the academy, the better an experience it will be. Definitely. Um, that's such an important thing to point out in our education. We don't want to live in bubbles where we aren't able to grow. Um, Jess, you want to talk a little bit about, about your experience at Minerva's very diverse student body? I know we have students from over 65 different countries, which is a little bit crazy. Um, but what have you learned from your international classmates as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before that I'm from South Africa, um, but I grew up my I grew up there my whole life. And when I was 18, I moved to China because I was like, I just want to learn a new language. I want to be somewhere new. I want to go the, like what's the furthest place from South Africa I can possibly go. So I went to the border of Tibet. And I think that that really just fueled my curiosity to learn about um, different cultures and languages and history, but also perspectives, because I went to China and then into Minerva, um, very curious about the world and very curious about other people and, um, you know, other opinions about um, just everything that the world, you know, current events, everything. But then being able to discuss those things in an academic setting uh, was absolutely fundamental to pretty much everything that I'm trying to do in my life now, um, everything that all the projects that I've gotten involved in, um, having someone give you this whole other perspective that yes, you could maybe read about it online and obviously you know exposure to different uh, materials always is always helpful but hearing someone articulate why they think these things um what what their perception of different topics might be um how how you can collaborate and bring those different perspectives together it doesn't always have to be opposing um or you know it doesn't always have to be something negative it's really just to grow and to learn um to find ways to collaborate as global citizens um it got to the point where probably my second year or so because at first would be like hi i'm jess i'm from south africa and where you're from was really a defining feature um, of your interactions it got to the point where your country and your background didn't matter and just bringing those opinions in was what fueled those conversations um and really that's when i started to feel like an actual global citizen um i'm still proud of where i'm from and who i am but um just 
being able to communicate as humans, being able to communicate with the people around me without seeing those differences um, was huge to my learning. Amazing. So we're ending, um, we're um, nearing the end of our live. We have a couple more questions and if the uh, viewers have any uh, further ones, please type them in the chat. If we're not able to um, answer them during our live, we'll try and um, either reach out after in the comment section or feel free to email our both of our respective teams on the websites that are listed down in the description. Um, were there any, um, kind of final clarifying thoughts, uh, Sade or Abby, that you wanted to talk about with Global Citizens here? Um, well, I can mention that the deadline is July 30th. And just want to reiterate that we are really committed to making this program accessible. And so I encourage you to email me, admissions at globalcitizenyear.org if you are interested, but have any concerns whatsoever about affording it, because we want to make it accessible. I would also encourage you to um, take a peek at the website. And if you are interested in receiving more information or learning more um, to fill out a request for more information, that way we can be in touch with you and you can um, get some more emails that include, you know, information about who our speakers are and what the classes will look like. Um, and those sorts of things. And if you're ready to apply, we are accepting applications on a rolling basis with a final deadline uh, at the end of July. So would encourage you to get that in as soon as possible. Jess, when is Minerva's Visiting Scholars deadline? Yeah, it's coming up very soon, July 20th, um, with an enrollment date of August 1st. So a few more days to get those applications in. Um, and we're very excited to see them. And I also just wanted to add uh, a final thought, um, just because I'm, I'm very excited about the, the idea of gap years in general. Um, I think now just with so many changes happening in the world and so much uncertainty, there are still ways that um, even if, you know, enrolling in university, right, most universities are online right now, campuses are not going back, the fall is just, it's gonna look very different from what people have planned and imagined, but that doesn't mean that um, you can't find other ways to really make something very you know, useful and credible and impactful of your gap year, um, learning from different institutions and your peers um, and these incredible programs that have been planned so that you, know, you can really make something of this year um, and feel good going into the following year. So excited to, to be able to offer these programs. Wonderful, that's uh, a very succinct way to I guess explain why we're both doing these. We want students to still have a fulfilling year despite what's happening, not just despite what's happening in the world, how we can empower students to learn the skills to then help solve these changes in the world because, I mean, oh, the youth, they're the answer, they're the future. And we all <laughs> believe that. Um, oh, why don't we both repeat the contact emails for our programs so that we can leave our uh, viewers with a great, great way to reach us. Um, and again, but the links for both the programs are in the description as well. Uh, sure. So I, I can, yeah, I can be reached at admissions at globalcitizenyear.org. Jess? Yeah. Um, for Minerva, you could email at, us at visitingscholars at minerva.kgi.edu. But Kayla will be, um, yeah, the, the links will be posted. So you could you could get it from there. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I think this is a success. Um, thank you again, Shade and Abby for joining us um, in this new endeavor and Jess as well for sharing her experiences. We hope to look, uh, we look forward to seeing you apply. <laughs> right. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.